<laughs> Hello YouTube, it's Barbara Jean again. Um, I'm just having so many thoughts. This is actually a lot of fun to be on YouTube and um, to be able to express my opinions and thoughts to those who would like to hear it. And um, whether you agree with me or not, that's okay. I, I don't mind if you don't agree with me. I, um, I don't agree with a lot of things I hear too. But it certainly gives me food for thought and I hope this does the same for you. Uh, I want to read a couple of scriptures. Um, just some things that the Lord gave to me many, many years ago um, that I would like to share with you now. Um, in the book of the Gospel of John, chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything that was made. In Him was life, and the life was in the light the life was the light of men the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it I um, also want to go to the beginning of the Bible uh, in the book of Genesis um, chapter 1 it says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. Um, down further in chapter uh, verse 6 it says, And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the water, and let it separate the waters from the waters. Okay, verse 9, And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together in one place, and let dry land appear, and so and, and it was so. Okay, verse 11, And God said, Let the earth be uh, put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit, in which there's, which is their seed, each according to the kind upon the earth. And it was so. Okay, and God said, this is verse 14, and God said, let there be light, lights in the firmament of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. Okay, and further on, verse 20, and God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the firmament and the heavens. Okay, so this is when he creates everything in the sea and the air. Okay, um, and the animals. And so anyway, um, verse 24, And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, cattle and creeping things, and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and of all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. Um, just a little something I wanted to say um, was something that the Lord spoke, spoke to me many, many years ago in regards to these verses. Um, he told me many years ago when I was struggling with some issues that if I wanted to change something in my life I had to speak it because we are created in his image it says so here we are created in his image we follow in the follows father's footsteps that's what Jesus did Jesus walked in the father's footsteps he never did anything that the father did not do he never said anything the father did not say he uh, copied the father because the father's ways are good and loving and true so Jesus never invented anything that the Father did not already create or already have planned or have um, laws about. Jesus always followed his Father. And he wants us to do the same because we are created in his image. And just as a child follows its father or mother in steps of uh, acting adult, even though they don't know what being an adult is because they're still children in their minds and in their bodies, they play act, they play and their play is imitation. And uh, so God calls us to imitate him and to be like children, 
to imitate him. And what did Jesus do? What did God do? Jesus is the word. Jesus spoke. Um, he is the word. And we are to do the same. Jesus, when he when God created the heavens and the earth, he spoke it into existence. He didn't he didn't strike a rock. He didn't um, mold a piece of clay with his hands. He didn't um, he spoke it. He said he spoke over and over again. It says he and he said, God said, let there be light. Um, we are not God, so we have a we have a problem with this because we don't immediately see the creative powers. God is so powerful that He can just speak a word and it happens. In our lives, we have to speak a word maybe a thousand times, a hundred times, ten times, before it actually manifests in our life. We have a lot of preachers out there who only seem to understand or seem to preach prosperity in this regard, but. Um, not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but unfortunately it makes us worship money rather than worship God, and you can't serve two masters. So therefore, um, although the principle is true, I think we need to watch our heart when in regards to prosperity teaching and what our motives are. However, that's another topic. What I wanted to say was, uh, in order to be creative in our lives, we need to speak it out loud. Um, one of the principles the Lord told me many years ago was when I read my Bible to read it out loud because when you read something out loud it circumcises the heart when you just read it to yourself in your mind it only affects the mind the mind uh, it doesn't reach your heart if you want to reach your heart you have to hear the word that's what the word says you must hear the word um, so when you read your Bible read it out loud so that you can hear what you're saying. And then what I've done over the years, not necessarily that you must do, but something that's really, I found really helpful, is after I've read the word, I ask the Lord to apply it to my heart in the name of Jesus. And um, when I want something changed in my life, say I, I have a spirit of unforgiveness and I need to forgive somebody, I speak out loud, I choose to forgive. I choose to forgive this person. I choose to forgive. It's a choice I make. I speak it out loud so that my heart can hear what I'm saying. My words change my heart. And over time, I find that I, it's the forgiveness gets easier and easier and easier. If you need um, to change your self-esteem, you feel like you are not uh, loved or whatever it is that you feel about yourself, you need to uh, read the verses out loud that refer... Re that uh, talk about God loving you and how much he values you. Read them out loud to yourself over and over and over again. Your creative word, your words out speaking out loud as God does. He speaks something out loud in order to change his universe. We must do the same. You must speak out loud in order to change our universe. Whether we're in the prayer closet or whether we're in church praising the Lord, lifting our hands, praising the Lord, these things change the heart. They affect the heart. They circumcise the heart. This is a very important principle because um, um, the law only changes the flesh, but love changes the heart. And like I said, the heart is very important to the Lord. It's very important that we learn to love like the Lord loves because that's maturity. That's a mature thinking Christian who thinks not law, but love. So if you want to change your universe, um, as God did here, uh, Jesus is the word. He says so. He was in the beginning, and he is God, and he is the Word. So put Jesus in your heart. Speak him often to yourself, to others. Uh, talk to him out loud, and uh, change your universe with your words, what you speak to others. Um, again, the Bible says, the weak will say, I am strong. The poor will say, I am rich. Therefore, it starts with an action of words. Then comes the creativity the Lord pours into creativity um, the more you speak what you want and what you need in your life uh, the more it can come to pass often Satan tries to steal the seeds that are planted in our hearts before they can actually come to fruition if it doesn't happen right away we often say well it wasn't meant to be we don't persevere in our um, our desire 
Sometimes the Lord tests us. How much do we want something? Well, how often are you going to pray about it? How often are you going to bring it into your life? How often are you going to praise Him for already receiving the answer? Before you even see it, faith comes by, um, not by fit, not by sight, but it's some sight. Faith is something that you can't see yet, but you hope for. So if you hope for something, speak it. Start speaking it, whether it's um, something about your children you want, some desire you have for your children, um, a new home, because um, God does care about whether we have a nice place to live or a decent place to live, should I put it that way. Uh, he cares about whether we have jobs, um, we're able to provide for our families. These are all important things. But anyway, this is something to think about. Um, this is, the, like I said, a word the Lord gave to me many, many years ago. And um, I hope you get some benefit from it and some edification. And um, God bless you all. And uh, all glory to Jesus.